of South is another opportunity of serving Nigeria since independence of Nigeria. Every other section of Nigeria have had the opportunity. If anybody's going to talk to him, it's me. But I'm not running because it's all of South East. I'm running because I'm Peter Obi, who believes that I'm the best candidate for this election. Born in Onicha in 1961, Peter Gregory Obi has changed the face of politics in Nigeria, utilizing his massive youth following, known as the Obedience, a movement that is seeking a new wave of good governance to disrupt the old order. At 61 years old, Peter Obi, a former governor of Anambra State from 2006 to 2014, is the youngest candidate among the leading contenders, bringing hope to a generation of Nigerians that are desperate for change. Mr. Peter Obi, even if you win, which we know you are going to win, and you don't do well, we, the Nigerian people, will sack you, we will fire you. In an interactive session with a select group of entertainers and influencers in Lagos, Nigeria, Peter Obi used the opportunity to engage with the drivers of the Nigerian creative industry. You have opportunity of being part of what we're doing. You have opportunity of creating this. Network. Go and tell your colleagues. It's not about anything. It's not about people dashing you people money. It's not about somebody telling you stories. Most of us who are going to tell you this, you now live in a place where people will tell you Peter B is stingy. Yes, stinginess is part of capital formation. conversation with the Labour Party presidential candidate and has shared his grand vision for a new Nigeria and the entertainment industry. Mr. Peter Obi, thank you so much for joining me on the program. It's amazing this whole interactive session you've had with the entertainers. You know, I saw you recently commend Thames for her first Grammy Award win. I'd like to know what your plans are for the future of entertainment in Nigeria. Well, when we talk about the issue of removing Nigeria from consumption to production, it is not just production in terms of what we say we're going to do with agricultural revolution, leading to industrialization, leading to exports, leading to trade and everything. It encompasses every sector, which includes sports, entertainment. These are critical areas we need to develop where we already have talents that we can scale up, invest more, to attract more into that sector, Countries have used sports and entertainment to stabilize, improve their economy, and put their people out of poverty, which in turn reduces criminality. Mm. So the entertainment industry, Nigeria is already one of the, what you can call global name in entertainment. Everywhere you go on the continent of Africa, Everywhere in the world, people watch Nollywood. Yes. Same thing goes with even our musicians and everything. So it is time to be able to help them to scale up what they're doing and be able to employ more people. Now, when you say, you know, you've always talked about moving Nigeria from consumption to production, how in concrete terms do you plan to do this? And what ideology drives this? Is it capitalism or socialism? Well, first is uh, capitalism, I would say socialism. But you have a, some socialist content mm -hmm. in the sense that what drives it is that today you can't feed yourself. So you use your scarce resources for energy to import food. Mm. When you have vast uncultivated land, you have vast youth unemployment, which if you invest in agricultural revolution, you will be able to employ more people. Because agriculture is today the greatest contributor to your 
GDP and the greatest employer of labor. But it's not even doing enough. You need to increase that space. Because your GDP, it's from production activity to a low. So you need to increase that. To increase it, you need to invest in that which is giving you more. And that product, in order to end, be able to deal with the entire value chain, moves it to industrialization. Because the raw material for your industry is now being produced. Use the industry, and that leads to again today your industries are contributing less than 10 percent of your GDP, and it's low. So, by the time you move your industry to contribute to wise tries what they contribute today, they create jobs, and that will lead to exports. And when it leads to exports, you earn more foreign exchange, which will stabilize your currency. Mm. So you could see, with agriculture, you feed yourself, you bring down the food inflation, which is the biggest thing. You have feed stocks, your industries, have exports, which will drive exports. In the end of the day, that's production I'm talking about. And people in the entertainment industry, we we'll do the same thing if we invest in them. They have a lot to do with their entertainment that will be exported in an organized manner. Again, you earn foreign exchange from there. Same thing goes with your sports. Mm. Imagine so many people playing, participating in sports everywhere right. and earning dollars. Yeah. And so it's a win win. So you have, at various times, expressed optimism about winning the forthcoming election. One thing I got from that interactive session that we had was the fact that you said that don't think about voting for Peter Obi. Think about voting for yourself. Where does this optimism come from? Well, because I believe that this election is an existential election that causes a generational change. Yeah. I've said it before, for the first time, there is in Nigeria an opportunity for an election where in a, a party participating in the election is presenting people with character, people with competence, capability, compassion, the physical and mental energy to do the job. Mm. For the first time, have a combination of party chairman, presidential candidates, vice presidential candidates, being people that were born after the independence. Mm. We must have a generational change. We must build a new Nigeria. That's what I'm committed about. In Nigeria, where Nigerians will not say, I'm from East, West, North, or South. Where they will not say they are Muslims or Christians, but they are Nigerians mm. and they are happy. That's why I'm going to invest in entertainment, in sports, in all those factors that unite us. Yes. They make it productive. We are people's talent to match up the opportunity. That's why I'm going to go to the north and make sure that all those cultivated lands are cultivated, start pulling people out of the poverty, mm -hmm. have a few stuff for industries that have been shut down. If you go to a place like Canada today, it's become a ghost of what it used to be. What do you for say? For buying industries, right. shut down. One, shut down two, three, all industrial areas are shut down. What do you say to those who believe that you will not get enough votes from people in the north? Well, because they have all they've been doing is to contrive all those things that make them in the past win and subject them to poverty. Talk about their religion, talk about their ethnicity, but they've seen that it didn't work because they're poor. Mm. That's why the father they follow them like that. Mm. And I'm saying to them, the election should not be about your religion. Mm. I respect the religious diversity of Nigeria, mm. and that is psychosant. I respect every religion, mm. and I believe that Christians, Muslims should live. Peacefully, 
Mm. And I must maintain that. I must make sure that each other's religion is respected and everything. I like people to go back and say, this is my, my ethnic background, mm. but it shouldn't be measured when it comes to consideration of Nigeria. Mm. I don't want the election to be run on my top. If anybody's going to talk to him, it's me. Right. But I'm not running because it's the turn of Southeast. I'm running because I'm Peter Obi, who believes that I'm the best candidate for this election. Why do you say that, if, it, if anybody, it should be your turn? Because the people of Southeast have had an opportunity of serving Nigeria since independence of Nigeria. Mm. Every other section of Nigeria have had the opportunity, except us. And now tell me, why should Nigerians put their trust in you? Because there's a, tra there's a traceable record, past record you can verify. I'm a successful businessman, and I started a business from scratch and built it to the point of success. I've been a successful person in the corporate world, and I've been in government. In fact, nobody has my combination in this race. I started a business from scratch built a business that is successful without any influence and everything. I've been in the corporate world where I was the director and chair operations. Nobody has this combination. In terms of education, I've been to good schools. I might not have the best of degrees like people can claim anything they claim, but I've been to the best schools in the world. I've had trainings in from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, Kellogg, IMD, London School of Economics, name them. Yeah. You know, going to these schools, even if it's just for one week, two weeks, makes all the difference. In Seattle, in France, where haven't I been? I've been everywhere, and they are documented. So I've been to trains, so I understand what it means. And I've been able, in terms of governance, I have governed the state for eight years. And I can say that that state, I know where it was when I started and where I left it. And I've been able to show that the only measure of development, the only development goals, or HDI, which is education, health, and pulling people out of poverty. And it's very well. And above all, their money was not missing. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you can accuse me of, I left $150 million and over $30 billion naira, and invested about the same amount. Nobody, I wasn't on the only obligation. Nobody put a gun. There was no requirement. There was no need. Nobody put a gun on my head. And this is why, at times when this happened in this country, people argue, I get worried. I did that without any condition. What I have believe is the right thing to do. Absolutely. I spoke with one of the entertainers, Peter Okoye. He said, Mr. Peter Obi, if you do not deliver everything that you have promised, we would fire you. I think so. It should be so. Okay. I believe that it's time for Nigerians to get up and say, we voted you because you promised A, B, C, D, F. Mm -hmm. And you're not doing that. But remember what I said. Whatever I promise is not going to be delivered overnight. I might not have 100% result, but I'm going to put 100% effort. Because people can entrust their faith in you and you let them down. Because by letting them down, you're letting the God down. Power is by grace of God. Fantastic. You must not abuse grace of God. Fantastic. Mr. Peter Obi, I want to thank you very much for granting this interview. Thank you. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. All right, Steve, over to you. What did you think of that? I thought that was brilliant. Um, I thought that you um, made good use of the short time yes, very uh, short. with the presidential candidate. Uh, but I think I'll comment more uh, on the import of the meeting that he had with the entertainment you know, industry. 
uh, and I thought that that was um, an incredible opportunity given uh, to him to share his dreams with that important sector of the economy, um, particularly at a time that he has been described as a mere Nollywood actor. You know, so that was a Nollywood actor speaking with his colleagues uh, in a language I believe that they understood, uh, which is a good thing to do. You will have seen uh, that since the campaign started, practically all the leading candidates have been moving about with entertainers and celebrities, you know, left, right, and center. Um, APC's candidate, Ashwa Jibola uh, I think was it yesterday, you know, in, in Kebi, said something about Arugungu that he will return it. Uh, I know what Atiku Abubakar has been saying, you know, he has had a series of meetings uh, with Nollywood people. So what uh, Mr. Peter LB did with entertainers was not a surprise. Absolutely. And I like the fact that he spoke about uh, the contribution of that sector to the GDP, you know, to the economy. Uh, it is not just about being popular. It is not just about developing a brand. It's about what are you bringing to the table. And when he shows understanding of what he knows, where you are, he says that this is now how the direction we have to move export what you are producing so that we can do a lot more you can contribute more to the table my worry however is that i hope that he won't end up like former president good luck jonathan who by the way did fantastically well with the entertainment industry he pumped in so much so much money um possibly the biggest since 1999 when democracy returned but i think he got carried away with the star power um, it's the popular faces, musicians and actors who were more into him. I think part of what uh, Mr. Peter will be, we need, we need to learn, like other you know, presidential candidates, is that yes, brand and star power are important. Uh, celebrities are good. Right. They might bring in votes, etc. Right. But the engine room of that sector, mm. the creative economy right. itself is not just about performance it's about those who are investing in that sector it's about the hoteliers it's about uh the restauranters it's about the people who are organizing festivals you know it's about people who are making things happen mm. he would need to focus more beyond individuals beyond associations who can shout the loudest it is beyond nollywood and music there is a whole load of ecosystem that you will need to sit down with. Uh, majority of the people that I saw there are celebrities. I didn't see big hoteliers. I didn't see people who have invested in resorts, etc. There was a time that Nigeria, Lagos in particular, used to be the go-to um, destination in December. The whole idea, the whole concept of dirty December was because something was happening. Right. And it wasn't happening just because there was star power. It's because there was an engine room. Today, most people are gravitating towards Ghana. Why do we allow that to happen? This is part of what uh, somebody like Peter will be and all the other candidates will need to look at. Mm -hmm. Revive the engine room so that you can make the creative industry. It's beyond entertainment. Entertainment right. merely defines it. All right, it. so that gathering was for the entertainment in and creative industry, and that is why majority of the people that you saw in that room were entertainers. That's what he I'm was saying. Going the creative move. industry so, so, encompasses Well, I think it was majorly the entertainers at that point. So yeah. let me just clarify that. If 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 I can, <laughs> or if I am allowed to we will do soon that have, as well. Uh, <laughs> somebody who's close to Peter Peter to too, speak to. Will do that we'll as well. Yeah. But you know what I liked about the interview is that he also capitalized on his slogan, which you know, which everybody knows. He wants to move Nigeria from consumption to production. And I like the fact that he highlighted that within the entertainment industry, particular and the sports industry. Mm -hmm. And that's what he really wants to do. I also like the fact that he mentioned that famous quote of, you know, if anything, it's my turn. It, it, it will be my turn. But he's not running on 
ethnicity or religion. He's running because he's Peter will be, you know, everybody has been talking about my turn. I know you're smiling, but, <laughs> he's, but not I really, he's not running on Emiloko. He's not running on Emiloko. That's what I wanted to say. Fair enough. And then he also <laughs> talked about, you know, how he's realized or the northerners have realized that, you know, the votes shouldn't be based on ethnicity and religion. And I think that that was a really good point that he highlighted in that interview. Um, that's that's my take. That was so good. Far. Beg. I want you to go beg. I know I don't deserve to beg for anything. I know I don't deserve it. But I want you to go. If you say I need that, I go need that. I beg. As it stands now, this country, now, men are reason We get about 70% of our population where we use see energy. Energy too much, we just day nothing, nowhere to channel and go, nowhere. They just, those energy just day. Make I tell us something. The devils, uh, the Bible said that the, the, uh, an idle man is the devil's workshop. Mo will not pray, make one day. Make these youth, out of frustration, they will come bounce back. Come face this country. We not go feel stand. See what did they happen for South Africa today. Where you go, see, say, youth, we know they walk. Youth, we know they walk. See what did they do. The one we be saying a car jacking, they do then day. The one we be saying a different kind of thing. The country does day like that country is so. If ask people where they stay for that country, they tell you about that. Forget said they did develop now because say colonial mass are still longer there. If then people where they stay that country tell you the way that country be, you go no say it they very very disastrous. So they keep youth unemployed and you don't give them hope and you don't give them vision. They just day. If time reach, if time reach, and they talk this thing. If time reach. Me and you will see food chop. We no see opportunity to chop that food. May we use this opportunity to start to build this country for, for better. Enough of this consolidatory appointment, what would they do? Enough of this compensationary appointment, what would they do? May we join hands together. Build this. This in our country. This in our, in our last hope. Now, see, all those countries where they reason say this month, you go jackpot. In this way, I go jackpot. Soon, 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 you will not be able to go to those countries. Soon, soon, you will not be able to go to those countries. And the time is very close. The time is near. Before Nigerians used to go to Ukraine, can you go to Ukraine today? No. Before Nigerians used to go to Russia, can you go to Russia today? No. Soon you may not be able to go to those countries again. Please, we will join hand. Do this our own country. Let us build our country. This is a, this is all we have. Let us pick somebody that is competent, that has character, that has capacity, that is ready to start with us. We build the country together.